You're probably really frustrated by all the issues that come from trying to mint an NFT from the project's website. Especially on really popular NFT projects, the website can get bogged down, not load, be super slow, and that can cause you to miss out on your awesome NFT. And that's why you need to learn how to mint an NFT directly through the smart contract. Minting through a smart contract is a much better, much more efficient way to mint an NFT without having to deal with all the buggy and slow issues that come from different websites. I'll be teaching you how to mint Ethereum NFTs directly directly through their smart contracts so that by the end of this video, you won't have to miss out on any of your favorite NFTs anymore. I'm Devin Cook, let's mint some NFTs and welcome back to Dev Money. Now I know that minting through a smart contract on Etherscan can be intimidating and it's much more user friendly just to go through the project's website. But I'm gonna make that all as easy as possible as I walk you through this step by step. And what are some of the benefits of dealing with this extra hassle and minting through a smart contract? Well, one of the benefits is you can sometimes get lower gas fees when minting directly through the smart contract versus when you're using the project's website. That's not always the case, but sometimes it does happen. And by minting through the smart contract, you can also get your transaction pushed through before those that are going through the public website. Think of it this way. When you mint through a project's website, you're using a middleman to mint your NFT. But when you mint through a smart contract, you're going directly through the producer or the manufacturer of that NFT, and you're eliminating that middleman. And another benefit is you won't have to deal with these project websites that sometimes aren't optimized for all the traffic that they're getting, which can cause you to lose your opportunity to mint the NFT because maybe sometimes it won't even load. I've had that happen. Now also there's some warnings and disclaimers you need to be aware of when you're minting through a smart contract. First, if you're trying to mint an NFT and the supply has already been totally minted and you go to mint it, you're gonna spend money on gas fees but you're not gonna get an NFT. So make sure that there are still NFTs left to be minted when you're doing this. Also, you do wanna make sure you have the correct smart contract address because if you're using the wrong contract address, you either won't get the right NFT or you won't get anything as well. So be aware that going into this, there are some things that can go wrong, but I'm gonna walk you through this step-by-step step to minimize those potential issues, and this should go through pretty smoothly. All right, now the first step that we wanna take is we need to actually find an NFT project that we want to mint. So I found this chicken suspect project, super random. I'm not endorsing it, it's just a random project, and we're gonna use it for this example. So you can see here that the public mint is in 22 hours, 45 minutes, and 28 seconds. And again, I cannot reiterate enough, you do not wanna use this method until the public sale has actually started, otherwise you're just gonna waste money on gas fees. You can see it launches November 21st, 2021, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 4,419 chickens, 0.05 Ethereum each. Okay, so now that we have this information and we wanna mint one of these NFTs, we're gonna to need to find the smart contract address. And to find the smart contract address, sometimes it's a bit of a scavenger hunt. You gotta look in a bunch of places to try and find it. And the first place I like to look is the website. So we're gonna look on their website and we're just gonna search smart contract. And we're gonna see, we've got two results here, smart contract right here, but it doesn't show the address. And then the other location, smart contract right here, but no smart contract address. So that's fine. Sometimes they don't have the smart contract on their website. The next place we're gonna check is their Discord. Discord. And on Discord, I like to check both the announcements channels and the official links channels. I typically find the smart contract in those places. And also keep in mind that a project sometimes doesn't release a smart contract address until a day or two before the project's release. All right, so I'm gonna come over here into announcements on this Chicken Suspects Discord, and I'm gonna scroll over and I'm gonna see actually just a couple of days ago, they tweeted right here that they are officially verified on Etherscan. So we're definitely gonna check out this tweet. We're gonna copy and paste this, and we're gonna open it up right here. And we can see this link right here to Etherscan and this is gonna take us to their smart contract. So now we're here on Etherscan and we can see that this is Chicken Suspects right here, which is exactly what we wanted. Now, if they don't announce on Twitter and just link you right to Etherscan, there's other ways you can find it as well. If we come back into their Discord and come over to their official links, we can look at their link tree. We can see when we open it up that it's actually gonna give us an OpenSea option. And this is really good because any project that you can find on OpenSea, you can see their smart contract address. So we're gonna come over here to OpenSea and we're gonna see the Chicken Suspects. It looks like some of the items have been minted probably by the developers. And if we click on any one of these NFTs, we can scroll down here to details and we can see this contract address right here. And this right here is what is gonna link you to Etherscan. So we click on this blue link right here and it's gonna take us to Etherscan. And you can see that it took us to the exact same page that Twitter took us to. We just got there via OpenSea. So either of those methods work, and if you've looked everywhere and you still can't find it, just send some messages on Discord and see if it's been released yet. So once we're here on Etherscan and we have access to their smart contract, we're gonna come over here to contract. It is important also to make sure that the contract is verified, and you're gonna see that via this little green check mark. Now we're gonna see a bunch of information, but what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to come over here to write 
contract. And there's a bunch of options down here, but we're gonna wanna come here to mint. And we're gonna get two amounts that we need to input. One is the count. Basically, this is the amount of NFTs that we want to be able to mint. So say I wanna mint 100 of these, we can put 100. Say you just wanna mint one, you can put just one. But keep in mind that you can only mint a maximum amount that the developers set. And then here, you're also gonna wanna put the amount of ether that you're gonna pay for these NFTs. So if the amount is set for 0 0.05, you're just gonna put 0 0.05. Now you do wanna make sure you put the exact correct amounts in these two boxes. Otherwise, you're just gonna lose your gas fees and you're not gonna get any NFTs. So in order to make sure we got these fields filled in correctly, I'm gonna actually go back over to their website to verify these. So as you remember, we did see on here that you mint each of these NFTs for 0 0.05 Ethereum each. And then you also wanna search their website and their Discord to see how many NFTs you can mint per wallet. So if we search for wallet on their website, we're gonna see that this is the only spot that comes up for wallet. It's not telling us how many per wallet. So we wanna go look on Discord. And if you look on Discord, you can see that the maximum amount that you can mint per wallet is two chickens. So that means that we can only mint two per wallet and it's 0 0.05 Ethereum each. And another way to verify this is if you come over back to Etherscan, instead of hitting write contract, hit read contract, and then you can see the maximum amount of tokens. There's 4,419 in the entire NFT project. Maximum amount of tokens per purchase is 20. So if you're seeing a discrepancy like this where the Discord said two and Etherscan is saying 20, Etherscan is gonna have the more correct amount, but you would probably wanna go on to Discord and see if you can verify that as well. They may have been saying that you can only mint two for each wallet per the pre-sale, but once the public launch starts, you can mint 20 per wallet. And then you can also verify the price down here. And you're gonna notice that it's a whole lot of numbers and you're like, hold on a second. I thought it was just 0 0.05 Ethereum, not like 5 trillion Ethereum. Well, this is in UNT256. And so if you click on this number right here, it's gonna convert it to Ethereum for you. And you're gonna see, you're just gonna look down here on the right, look Ethereum right there. And then you scroll over and you see 0 0.05. So 0 0.05 Ethereum, just like we saw on their website. So now we're gonna come over here back to write contract. If we did wanna mint two of those, we need to change this to two and we need to change this to point one because we just multiply 0 0.05 times two. But for the sake of this example, I'm gonna leave it at 0 0.05 and leave that at one. And then I'm gonna hit right. And then you're going to get this message show up that says, please connect to your Web3 provider. Basically, you have to connect your MetaMask to Etherscan. And in order to do that, you're just going to come back up here to the top, hit connect to Web3. You're going to get this notification come up and just hit MetaMask. And if you have multiple accounts on MetaMask, it's going to ask you which one you want to connect to. Do make sure to connect to the one that is not connected to a hardware wallet. I know it's much more secure to use a hardware wallet, but sometimes there can be issues minting NFTs with hardware wallets. And so to be more safe, I would just use a normal MetaMask account. And then you can always send those NFTs to your hardware wallet after you've minted them. So we're going to go ahead and click connect to MetaMask. It's going to let us know it just wants us to view the permitted accounts, which is great. We never want it to be able to write or change anything. So view is perfect. Hit connect. It's connecting. And now if you refresh the page, you can see that it is connected right here. So then we'll come back down to mint, put 0 0.05, put 1, and then again, we're gonna click right. And once we hit right, we're gonna get our MetaMask window pops up that tells us all the details about this transaction. We can input our gas fees and we can hit sign or reject depending on the gas fees that we're getting. So it's giving us a massive amount of gas fees right now. It's telling us it's gonna be 3.69 Ethereum. I'm assuming that this is because the project hasn't actually launched yet. So I'm definitely gonna reject this transaction. But assuming that the project was actually launched, we're gonna get a much lower gas fee and you're gonna be able to hit sign and you're gonna be able to buy that NFT. So that's how you meant an NFT directly through the smart contract. Let me know if you have any questions down below in the comments. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.